hi, it's been a while. And th which makes what I'm about to say seem probably quite odd. <laughs> so it's now 10 years really since I've posted anything. So it's going to be kind of odd to say, I'm, I'm announcing that I'm going to try and start up two new channels. Now, one of the reasons why I wouldn't even be thinking about this before was because of work, because I was working a lot of hours and because I had not done a lot of the things that I wanted to do, I thought I'm going to take some time off and I'm going to do those things because I think that they're important for various reasons. And so I'm just hopping on here today to say, and when this is posted, it means that I have taken those two channels live. The first is going to be an extension of what I've done previously on this channel and all the content in this channel will be put in a playlist on the new channel and is still going to be available here rather than re-upload everything. Uh, part of me said, let's be real crazy and let's redo all of that. And it's like, no, I'm just going to post it. It's, I don't have any problem with anything that I've said in any of it. The new channel is going to be therefore religious in nature. It's going to be about the first century period and and how we understand the New Testament as we do and why I think that we misunderstand so much of the New Testament, even though it's pretty obvious when you realize that there are things in there that really shouldn't be there if the New Testament really is the revelation of that which Christianity sees as the revelation of of the Christ Jesus in Jesus and really the door being opened up to Christianity, you know, and the disciples going out and doing all this stuff and starting the church. And, and it's kind of like there was something else going on there. So I'm going to, I'm going to call it something along the lines of a, the God fearers hypothesis, or maybe the God fearing Gentiles hypothesis, uh, because in part it is connected to understanding who or how the book of Acts in the story of the emergence of the church and and uh, the, the inclusion of the Gentiles that uh, really was actually there was something else going on. Now, now, some people are aware that there was there was this dynamic, but they lack the wherewithal to draw a conclusion about the implications that suggest how we understand the events is simply incorrect, that if we took those implications and, and, and the implications being that for hundreds of years, Gentiles outside of Judea, the Bible Belt in the Middle East, um, outside of Judea, it was not uncommon in the synagogues that had built up in these Jewish communities throughout the empire, uh, both the Roman and the Greek. It was not uncommon for Gentiles to join synagogues. Now, how prevalent it was and was it universal like in all synagogues? We don't know that. What we do know, it it was certainly was not uncommon for Gentiles to be inside of these synagogues. And the book of Acts actually attests to that when Paul goes to these synagogues. So anyway, it, I'm going to be talking about that and about about our unawareness of, of the these centuries before the time of Jesus and as well, even what happens after. Now, I'm not a historian, so I'm not going to be laying any claim to anything other than the fact that having picked up bits and pieces along the last 25 years, uh, let's, anyway, we'll talk about that in the channel. So, and the other one is, and the other channel is uh, a consequence in part, actually largely by, because of the stroke that I had in 2012 uh, that uh, affected primarily my the right side of my body meant that I uh, even today there's there are things that I can't do with my hand that the that needs to have the right kind of control mechanisms like I can't strum a guitar <laughs> when I started rehabbing my hand on the piano uh, a couple oops, a couple of years ago, I realized, I think I got enough motor skill here. I might be able to get some satisfaction out of that. So, and so that's what I did. I went and I bought, uh, and, uh, anyway, this is, uh, this is the book that I used, um, in the 1970s 
to learn piano on, recommended by my teacher, Graham Steed, who he was just a, an incredible musician, organist, choir director at the First Baptist Church. Uh, I went to church when I was younger, but I never went to the First Baptist Church. When he came to town in the early se early to mid-70s, that's where I was sent, and this is what I learned piano on. But of course, it was published in 1908 and has not been republished since. But that was the book that he, he required um, for instructing students new to the piano more than me. Well, anyway, when I was reacquainting myself in my late 50s compared to when I was a teenager, uh, I came to appreciate things about the book I could not appreciate when I was younger. Also having a little bit of experience teaching piano along the way and also my own interest in composition and writing. When I was going through it this time, I was finding myself noodling around and realizing it's like, there's a lot of things that really you could explore with these pieces, like even the simple pieces. And, and uh, because most of the pieces really ha have the purpose of teaching, you know, specific techniques and skills at the time to learn that. And then in it gets incorporated moving forward. N number of ideas that I had and what I have actually started working on about a month ago is taking all of the music and putting it into Muse Score, the, the free software for scoring. And uh, there's going to be links in the channel and all that stuff. And and I'm going to also be posting content both in Muse Score form and in PDF form for people who just want the PDFs and would like to either print them or watch them, put them on, on their piano in front of their tablet or whatever they play. If you're interested in seeing this reconstruction going on, then check out the channel. And this channel, uh, my channel, is going to be for the purpose of everything else. Um, I've been wanting for a long time to do the Monopoly game study and, and analysis of of a TED talk that was offered by some some guy who was a part of that study and the conclusions that they came to. And it's like, I think you kind of missed the whole point. <laughs> but anyway, um, have a good day.